I grew up here in Shooters Hill, southeast London, on this street, in fact. It's right next door to Woolwich. My parents were from Peckham, and like many others during the 50s and 60s, they moved outwards towards the suburbs, motivated as much as anything by a desire to become homeowners. Now, as a small kid, I would gaze wistfully at this fantastic London skyline, which I saw as a kind of emerald city. Of course, back then, it was dominated just by the Dome of St Paul's and the ultra-modern wonder of what was then known as the GPO Tower. Woolwich was a thriving, mostly white working class town with military associations going back years. There was an immigrant population too, mostly accepted without a thought. The place had a strong identity, a firm sense of itself. Indeed, McDonald's chose Woolwich to open its very first UK outlet in 1975. Incredibly exotic to us, of course, as we packed the then bustling high street to witness the grand opening. Coming back to Woolwich to live many years later, it had of course changed utterly to the point of being unrecognisable. A home now seemingly to the whole world, a place of countless identities and none. There is little sign in this landscape of what remains of the white working class. The speed of change has been mesmerising. Indeed, lacking any real sense of overarching identity, the need to impose a sense of community has become paramount. Whether locally or indeed as we see nationally, never have we heard the word community so banded about. But it's all pretend, really. Community was never talked about before, simply because it didn't have to be. If there is a date when the demographic transformation of London, and indeed Britain, took on a whole new order, it would be 1997 and the election of the Blair government. From that point on, migration on a scale which could be argued as reasonable enough in any country, gradually gave way to the imposition of a mass migration, which was without historical precedence. All of this has meant that a new narrative has had to be put in place and pushed at any opportunity. London, it is claimed, is and always has been a city of immigrants. Just last month, Mayor Sadiq Khan proclaimed that London was in fact built by migrants and refugees. Well, I mean, quite simply, the idea that um, London has always been a multicultural city and that it's thanks to immigrants that this wonderful megapolis was built is, uh, quite frankly, is propaganda. It's pro propaganda that's not based in any fact. It's, uh, it's a myth, of course. Poppycock. It's absolute nonsense. And then I speak as a, a Windrush generation migrant. I came here in 1956 and my father came here in 1950 and we were part of that early post-war generation of migrant coming here. Well, frankly, the sort of people that uh, Sadiq Khan is talking about came much later. In 1954, I think there was only something like 4% of the population was in, in fact uh, um, non-UK born, shall we say. Apart from being historically nonsensical, Sadiq Khan's claims amount to a gross insult to the countless generations of English and British Londoners who over centuries made their city one of the greatest in the world. It's the kind of revision of history which Orwell spoke about. Woe betide anyone who goes against it. The comedian John Cleese was condemned simply for saying that London was no longer really an English city something which to most sentient people would be a perfectly reasonable view. Indeed, the boosters and promoters of contemporary London actually glory in the fact that it is not English or British. To them, that's a virtue. It's what makes the city great. It's only been recently in the, the, the post-war years that we've seen this change, but as recently as 1961, 90, uh, almost 98%, 97.7% of London was white. 
by 1971, when you begin to see the end of empire and people coming here, then you begin to see a drop. So it was 93% in 1971. By 1981, that had dropped down to, to 86%. And then by um, uh, 1991, uh, it had gone down to, to 80%. And that's when you see the great dramatic drop happening on, because between 1901 and 2001, of course, we had Tony Blair starting, and we saw a 20% drop in London's white population from, from, from 80% down to 60%. Then by 2011, it had gone down to around 45%. And at the last census in 2021, we know that the population of London that is white British is about 37 percent. So it's quite without precedent, I think, in the history of the modern world for a city, a capital city, to have its indigenous population decline from 97 percent, 98 percent in 1961, down to the fact that it's barely a third uh, 70 years later. So what exactly is a Londoner, according to this new narrative? Well, it would seem to be anybody who simply lives here whether they're from a family that goes back generations in the city or people who simply arrived last month. In other words, nobody has any claim on London. I've always found it amusing that those people who celebrate the lack of British or English people in the capital would probably be quite horrified to find on one of their holidays that, say, Paris was suddenly less French or that Mumbai was now a minority Indian city. London, like Britain, is celebrated by our liberal overlords only to the extent that it embraces all other cultures. Its own is allowed to wither on the vine. <laughs>